Okay, so today we're going to be doing a lecture on thermodynamics. And so thermodynamics um, is the study of, you know, heat and energy and how they're related. Um, so the first thing we're going to go over are the laws of thermodynamics. So the first one is the law of conservation of energy. We probably all have heard of this one. Um, so this just says pretty much that energy is neither created or just um, destroyed. So we're always going to have the same amount of energy, but it's going to flow between different things. Um, and so that's pretty simple. So the second one is going to be um, disorder always increases or something called entropy. So entropy um, is denoted by S. Um, and so we're going to say that the change in entropy is always increasing. So it's always greater than zero. All right, so entropy is always increasing. So I guess you can think of it like um, your room is always getting messier. The, the entropy is always increasing. All right? uh, we don't need to think too much about it. The MCAT really never tests on what exactly entropy is. Just know that it's disorder. All right? so, so the next thing we're going to be talking about is Gibbs free energy. Um, and so what is Gibbs free energy? So we'll define it as delta H minus T delta S. Um, so we'll actually go into a little bit of detail on what each of those are. So delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So delta H is something called enthalpy. Right, and um, so enthalpy is just a measure of you know, the amount of energy used or released um, at a constant pressure. So um, enthalpy again has another equation. So we see that it's the amount of energy um, used at a constant volume. Uh, but pretty much you can think of it um, as just talking about uh, the energy to, to break or release a bond. So that's all we really need to know. Um, we'll see that more in chemistry, but for the bio section, just know that that, that enthalpy uh, relates with energy and heat, um, and it has to do with um, Gibbs free energy as well. Okay? And we said again, delta S is entropy. All right, so that's pretty much all we need to know, disorder. But a little bit more about enthalpy. So I think you guys have heard of this before, but if something has a delta H that's less than zero, this is going to be considered something that's exothermic. And if delta H is greater than zero, this is going to be endothermic. All right. Um, so pretty much, yeah, that, that's pretty much what we need to know in terms of the equation itself, all right? Um, so we know that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So that actually will tell us the, the amount of energy or the change in energy exactly um, in a given reaction. Um, but that doesn't tell us too much because delta G is dependent on the actual concentration of the molecules at a certain time. So we can't really measure delta G very well. So what we do is we use delta G naught prime. So delta G naught prime is very, very similar to uh, um, delta G, but delta G naught is at a standard state, okay? Um, so this standard state, and this standard state, um, we have it um, at one atmosphere of pressure. So that's pretty much like what we all experience. Um, it's also at 25 degrees Celsius, uh, which is room temperature, um, and it's at a pH of seven, okay? Um, so that's pretty much what it is. It's just a very standard state that we can compare delta G to. Um, so delta G naught prime equals negative RT ln KEQ prime. So another equation that we have to know, but they're all pretty simple. Um, and this R is the gas constant. They'll give you that on the MCAT. Um, and T is temperature, but it's always in Kelvins. Always remember that. Generally, you can remember that anything for the MCAT, if you, if you don't remember, just, just remember it as Kelvin's. All temperature is probably going to be Kelvin's. Um, so KEQ prime, what is KEQ prime? So if we have this equation, and notice how I put this back and forth arrow, that means that it's at equilibrium. That means the rate, that doesn't mean that it's, it's constant. That doesn't mean that um, you know, nothing's going on. It's not stagnant. It means that something A plus B is changing to C plus D at the same rate that C plus D is changing back to A plus B. Right, so the rates are constant. That's why you have known that change. Right, so KEQ prime equals CD over AB. Um, and these little brackets uh, are just concentration. So it's the concentration of C times D over the concentration of A times B. So if we had something that said KEQ prime is greater than zero, right, what is that telling us? Uh, sorry, KEQ prime is greater than one. That's pretty much just telling us that we 
at equilibrium, so it's always at equilibrium, the concentration of C and D is going to be higher than the concentration of A and B. And the reverse would be true if KQ prime was less than 1. All right. So now that we, we know what delta G not prime is, um, and remember uh, delta, delta G not prime, sometimes they just call it delta G not, sometimes they call it delta G prime, um, depending on your book, depending on whatever it may be. But I think for the MCAT, they always call it delta G not prime, uh, but it's just semantics, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so delta G though, how do we relate delta G to delta G not prime? Okay. So delta G equals delta G not prime plus R T L and Q. So another time we have to define what Q is. Um, so now we'll have a new equation. I'll use the same variables. Um, so A plus B goes to C plus D. But now this is just a, um, a reaction that, that goes forward. It can go in the reverse direction, but it's not at equilibrium. Okay, so I'll just say that it's the forward direction like that. Um, so Q equals C D over A B. So all this is saying is that the reaction is currently not at equilibrium. So what are the current concentrations of our products and reactants? And that's what Q is. Okay? So Q is actually at the immediate state. What is the concentration at this specific time versus KEQ prime, which is what is the concentrations ratio at equilibrium specifically? Okay? Um, so that should pretty much give you a basic understanding of how to solve for delta G, delta G not prime, KQ, um, and Q. Uh, so we'll just go over uh, a quick one, run through on just the overview of what all of these were. So delta G being greater than zero, um, it's something called endergonic. Um, let's contrast that to delta H being greater than zero, that is endothermic. Okay. Um, so now delta G less than zero, that's going to be exergonic. And delta H is less than zero, is going to be exothermic. Okay. Um, and so I just kind of want to throw this one out. Delta G not prime being less than zero. Can we say that that's going to be um, exergonic? The, the answer is no. Because, um, let's go back to our equation. All right, so we're saying that if delta G naught prime was negative, uh, do we know what delta G could be? Well, the answer is no, because what if KQ was humongous? So we thought this was really big. I'm just going to put infinity. That means this term is huge. All right, so that means delta G now became positive. So you can see how delta G naught prime being negative or positive doesn't actually tell us what at the current state how our reaction will, will, will go. We'll go in the forward reaction or we'll go in the reverse reaction. All right? um, so that's just throwing that out there. Delta G not prime being greater than less than zero. They'll always ask on the MCAT, is it spontaneous or non-spontaneous? And the answer is you can't tell from delta G not prime. Um, but from delta G you can. So exergonic will be spontaneous. Um, delta G not, no, sorry, delta G greater than zero, which is endergonic, will be non-spontaneous. That just says that at the current state, it won't go in the forward direction of spontaneously if it's endergonic. And just to go to the bottom um, for delta S being greater or less than zero, um, that's just about entropy. So greater than zero, positive entropy. Greater disorder, less than zero um, will be uh, less disorder. Um, and just know that in nature, we're always favoring this positive delta S.